Fast food burgers in America are ubiquitous. Every town has a McDonald's, Wendy's, and a Burger King. And that's just the big three. There are scores of other regional burger chains scattered across the country, each offering their own unique take on a fast food hamburger. But for every chain currently pushing out patties, there's another that didn't make it and lies forgotten in history. Anyone remember Hill's Snappy Service? Or Heap Big Beef? Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm Nostalgic Nick for Do You Remember? And today we're taking a deep dive into one of America's most iconic forgotten fast food chains, Burger Chef. Gosh, Burger Chef, it's Wolf Burger the Werewolf. We're gonna get delicious burgers. A riveting tale involving a cast of some very colorful characters, a ton of meat, and even murder. Yep, be sure to hit that thumbs up button for us and subscribe to our channel for more servings of tasty videos. But for now, order up. Burger Chef was founded in 1954 in Indianapolis by brothers Frank and Donald Thomas. And from its inception, the restaurant was a massive hit selling its Big Chef and Super Chef burgers. How, you ask? How did this small burger joint grow into a chain with over a thousand locations in the US? Well, a combination of a great burger and impressive marketing. And we can have the connection that we're hungry for. The first thing Burger Chef had going for it was the flame broiler, the invention of which by the Thomas brothers actually spurred them into opening their first restaurant. And what is a flame broiler? A fiery hot meat conveyor belt that transported patties over an open flame and allowed Burger Chef to cook an astounding 800 hamburgers an hour. This almost supernatural cooking speed gave Burger Chef the leg up on their rivals when it came to wait times. And we all know how impatient hungry people can be. Okay, starting over! Five burgers with everything, five medium cokes, the end! The fixins. Not only was Burger Chef innovative when it came to how they cooked their burgers, they were also at the forefront of topping their burgers. In the 60s, burger chains generally only sold one or two different burgers, and the ability to customize those few options was limited. That all changed when Burger Chef introduced the Works Bar, a salad bar type situation that allowed customers to add anything they wanted to their burgers. Pickles, lettuce, relish, onions, Tomatoes, ketchup, mayo, throw on some mustard. It's all fair game. This allowed the Burger Chef guests to have it their way, leading to today when you can pretty much get whatever you want on your hamburger. And it explains why have it your way worked so well as the classic Burger King motto. All we ask is that you let us serve it your way. All right. The kiddos. Burger Chef was also very popular with the kids. In the early 70s, the chain started selling the fun meal with stories and packaging focused on a lovable cast of characters, including the magician Burgerini, Count Fangburger the Vampire, a witch named Cackleburger, and of course the main man himself, Burger Chef. The fun meal included puzzles and toys and wait, hold on. This is starting to sound suspiciously like something that a certain certain chain of golden arches uses to bribe the youth of the world. Oh, Burger Chef, how could you rip off such a beloved American institution? Wait, not so fast? Upon a deeper dive into hamburger history, you realize that the Fun Meal was instituted in 1973, while the Happy Meal didn't come out until 1979, making McDonald's Kids Fair a complete ripoff. In fact, Burger Chef sued McDonald's for copyright infringement, but ultimately lost because nobody puts Ronald in a corner. To all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Promotions. Fun meals weren't the only fun thing about Burger Chef's advertising. Just listen to some of these slogans from over the years. We really give you the works. Burger Chef goes all out to please your family. Open wide America, you can never forget. You get more to like at Burger Chef. Okay, is it just me or do any of these sound slightly sexual to anybody else? They had to know what they were doing, right? But anyway, by the mid 70s with a great product and fantastic marketing, the sky was the limit for Burger Chef. 
Get this, they even secured the sole licensing agreement to have Star Wars toys come with their fun meals. And even Jan Brady was pitching their burgers. So I know what you're thinking. If Burger Chef was so great and all, why haven't I seen one in almost 40 years? How did an iconic American restaurant loved by young and old alike decline to such a point that the company was sold to a competitor? The answer is a threefold mixture of talented competition, over aggressive expansion, and of course, murder. The fall. In the mid-1970s, Burger Chef was one of the most popular fast food chains in America, but they were hardly the only ones out there. We've already touched on how that creepy clown plagiarized his way into the hearts and minds of America's impressionable youth, but McDonald's wasn't alone in trying to knock the chef down a peg or two. In the mid-60s, Burger King had also begun to use the flame broiler to cook their burgers, allowing them to also pump out perfect patties at an impressive rate. And a little ginger girl named Wendy had started her own burger restaurant in 1969, and that chain exploded in popularity in the 70s. Hey, where's the meat? I don't think there's anybody back there. Especially in Burger Chef's home territory, the Midwest. And along with the big three, you had smaller competitors like Big Boy, and a little foreshadowing here, Hardee's, who were hot on their tail. Burger Chef could ill afford any financial missteps. Whoops. In the early 70s, Burger Chef underwent massive expansion in order to capitalize on their nascent success. In 1968, the chain had 600 stores, but in just four years by 72, they had doubled their numbers in the US, making it the second biggest fast food chain in the country, after only McDonald's, of course. Burger Chef even attempted to break into the international market, a tough ask seeing as the international market is dominated by houses of pancakes. In 1968, the chain opened 10 restaurants across Australia in an effort to become the predominant burger down under. But the whole enterprise was a disaster. And by 1975, all 10 were closed and the company had lost over $1.3 million. I could have foretold that outcome because as everyone knows, they only ever put shrimp on the barbie in Australia. Am I right? Am I right? Am I? <laughs> Good day, mate. <laughs> Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. So, in tense competition and financial mismanagement, at least there wasn't a tragic event that was a public relations nightmare with endless bad press that forever was associated with the name Burger Chef. Oh wait, now what? I'll take a number one, murder. Around midnight of Friday, November 17th, 1978, an employee of a burger chef in Speedway, Indiana, decided to visit his friends at work. He found the restaurant empty, the back door ajar, the store's safe open and empty, and all four workers were nowhere to be found. As the restaurant only reported about $500 in losses, the police assumed that it was just a petty case of burglary and that the four workers, all between the ages of 16 and 18, had taken the money to go party in an extraordinary step. They took no photos of the crime scene and even let the restaurant be cleaned and open for business the next day. However, the teens didn't show up on Saturday morning, and on Sunday afternoon, all four were found dead in a field over 20 miles away. The case remains officially unsolved to this day, because while the police believe they know who committed the crime, a lack of physical evidence makes prosecution impossible. They did have some theories over the years, but never enough to make a case. Uh, they had many witnesses, or rather many suspects, I'm told, but never had enough evidence for an arrest. This story swept the nation and became known as the Burger Chef Murders. Tons of news stories with your restaurant's name and murder going hand in hand? No, not ideal. Fire sale. By the early 1980s, this combination of negative public perception, over-aggressive expansion, and cutthroat competition had led to lagging sales and store closings for Burger Chef. In this weakened state, the chain was no match for its rivals, and in 1982, its parent company sold Burger Chef to Amasco, which also owned Hardee's for $44 million. Most Burger Chefs were immediately converted into Hardee's, while the rest were left to slowly wither and die on the vine. Think about the 
magic that could have been. Magic brought to you by Burgerini, of course. The last remaining Burger Chef closed its doors in 1996. By then, a pale imitation of the massive restaurant empire that once competed for burger domination. And there you have it, the tale of the rise and fall of a once omnipresent burger chain. Do you remember going to Burger Chef? Did you love the food? Did you hate it? Tell me someone remembers that toppings bar. And I also want to know today, what is your personal favorite fast food restaurant? Let me know in the comments below. We read everyone. And be sure to hit that thumbs up button for us and subscribe to the channel for even more throwback goodies. As always, from all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks for watching. We're closed for now.